in this regard, I think it's important to note that the charity uh, run by Anne taking part in this project is a key player in going forward with the update of the previous guidelines. And now go to measurement. Now, guidelines are typically assessed by two tools. One of them is called agree to, another tool is called write. Now, once you produce your guideline, you would hope that it will meet the requirements of the agree and write tools applied to guidelines. Now, agree typically assesses the quality of the guideline and write typically assesses the reporting of the guideline. These are not straightforward assessments. Here I just show you an example from assessment of guidelines concerning screening and treatment of breast cancer. And you can see that fairly sophisticated analyses are required. With respect to the AGREE guideline, the domains covered relate to scope and purpose, stakeholder involvement, rigor of the development, and other features. Uh, on, on the other hand, the right guy, uh, statement for assessing guidelines um, has more domains. The particular one here related to funding and declaration of interests will be relevant to our project. Presumably, the experts involved would need to declare their conflicts and interests in a manner that will be acceptable to medical journals. Now, having talked a little bit about the creation of the stakeholder group, I now move on to the Delphi survey process. Um, I've been involved in projects that have used two or three surveys. Um, in some other projects, I know more than three rounds have been used. Uh, I anticipate that in your project, probably two rounds will be more than sufficient. The statements produced will need to be assessed on, for their importance or priority on a scale, for example, a one to seven point scale, and I'll show you an example of that. Then the findings of the first round should be reported in the second round to the participants so they can take that information into account when revising their opinion about the importance of the statement. And then the thresholds for whether the statement comes in or is ruled out of the consensus should normally be preset, but it does not have to preset in an arbitrary fashion as shown here uh, with a level of percentage agreement. It can use more sophisticated statistical analysis. And I'll show you one example of that going forward. So from an exemplar uh, consensus that I will present in detail in a moment, here we take a statement. It was concerning the integrity of randomized control trial. And the statement was, if honest mistakes are identified post-publication, and a ratum should be published. In this case, there are 36 people involved in giving their priority to this statement on the scale of seven points that starts with strongly disagree at the bottom end and strongly agree at the top end. And we can see that amongst 26 respondents, the majority say that they agree or strongly agree with this statement. On the other hand, you also see that, none, that some participants either uh, don't wish to express an, opi in op an opinion or they have no opinion concerning this particular uh, statement. And you can see that such a statement with such a high level of agreement will normally pass forward to be finalized and accepted even after the first round will not need to be considered in a second round or in a further discussion. 
On the other hand, you can see another statement where we are talking about informed consent. And the idea here is that this should be developed with the input of the patient, the representative or the public. And here you can see that some participants from the, from the stakeholder panel have some level of disagreement concerning this uh, statement. It is possible that this type of statement where there is some level of disagreement may not pass through the first round of uh, consensus and it may require to be reviewed and put together in put put forward one more time in a second round with this feedback provided as to what was the level of agreement in the first round here is another statement concerning the continuous public documentation of trial materials where there seem to be even some participants who quite strongly disagree and prefer that confidentiality takes priority over transparency in this case it may be difficult to reach a consensus um, and may require following the two rounds of delphi consensus in a face-to-face -face online or hybrid meeting where discussion may take place to convince colleagues and voting may take place uh, on a third occasion So, I earlier referred to an arbitrary level of threshold for approval of statements. And here you can say a 70% arbitrary level was used in this project. And 67% of the statements passed through this arbitrary threshold. However, using a more sophisticated analysis that takes the balance of opinion provided by the participants and uses that information to generate a threshold based not an arbitrary level but on a statistical analysis of the responses provided from the participants creates a new threshold that may be used to pass statements forward into the next round or to accept them or to reject them and apart and, and this method is called epmo or average percentage of majority opinions but apart from this method there are other uh, approaches that uh, that may employ uh, interquartile range and and still more methods that i have not listed here so this approach that i just presented i present to you now this exemplar project this project was first regi registered publicly on Open Science Framework Registry on the 3rd of December 2021. And it was about creating the consensus concerning integrity of clinical trials. This public documentation, I believe, is a good thing that, that you should consider doing for your project. I don't believe it is mandatory, but I think it is good practice that would enhance the value of the consensus project that you wish to undertake. In this consensus project, uh, we went through the same steps that I've highlighted be before. Panel composition, a systematic review of the literature, coll collation of a long list of statements, two rounds of Delphi, to shortlist the statements, then a consensus meeting to deal with the most controversial statements, the analysis of the data, and sharing of that data publicly, along with preparation of the manuscript. And then it's in the hand of the peer reviewers. But at the same time, a preprint of the manuscript is made publicly available. So anybody who wishes to make comment outside the peer review system can provide those comments to the authors or even to the journal directly and then finally a formal publication so concerning the consensus panel we listed the list of expertise required that should be covered by the members of the panel in this case 
we took the entire journey from protocol development of the clinical trial, ultimately to whether the systematic reviewers will put these trials together and how they would deal with it with respect to regulatory approval and market access with respect to trials concerning medication. I think it would be a good idea for you to create a list of competencies and experiences that you consider are relevant for the condition you are dealing with. And then seek to ensure that the panel membership covers all those expertise and experiences that you think are relevant. And then a systematic review should be carried out. In this case, we chose to simply carry out a review of existing reviews. And this may also be sufficient in your case, or it may not be. This will be a judgment call that the core group leads this consensus would need to make. The studies reviewed would need to be assessed for their quality and the messages taken from them will need to be then grouped into domains. In your case, the domains might be diagnosis, treatment and monitoring or other subcategories of these domains. Here, there were six domains with respect to uh, clinical trial integrity. Now, I take you through this process so you can see the various steps involved. So once we first undertook the systematic review, from this, we were able to generate 38 statements. The stakeholder provided further statements that were not generated from the literature. Put together, there were 100 and 11 statements which were put through the first round of Delphi using mm -hmm. the seven point scale. And from them, 54 were approved at the first round and were taken forward for inclusion in the final consensus to be submitted for publication. The threshold was not met by 47 statements. They were revised, reviewed, some were discarded, others were reworded. And the stakeholders who took part in the first survey had an opportunity to provide further new statements in light of the knowledge they gained from going through the process of the first Delphi survey. And the second round, therefore, took forward 40 statements for consideration. Of these, 24 met the consensus threshold. 16 did not meet the threshold. The 24 were added to the previously approved statement through the first round. So we were now with 78 agreed statements. Amongst the 16 that did not meet the threshold, <clears throat> The consensus meeting looked at them and discarded some and approved others. And in the end, 88 statements were approved for inclusion in the final publication. Now you can see here that the data for each of the rounds and the analysis were then made publicly available on the same open science framework platform soon after the analysis was completed on 29th of june 2022 you can see this was around six to seven months after the project was first registered on the same day when the journal when the manuscript was prepared uh, and the raw data were, were, were the manuscript was finalized and the raw data were uh, made publicly available. The manuscript was also made a preprint and made publicly available. And recently, this manuscript following peer review has been accepted. So in summary, I think 
it would be uh, uh, not hard to imagine that producing a collaborative consensus when large multi-center studies do not exist is a hard task. In the case of clinical trial integrity consensus, it took us over six months. And you can see that it took a further nine months for peer review, comments, and final acceptance of the manuscript. With respect to consensus, there is often disagreement. And consensus, I believe, provide a pathway to creating a solution when there is the likelihood of disagreement. And the consensus methodology, once formally published as part of a consensus guideline in its methods section, allows for others to transparently see how the guidance has been produced, and they can have greater confidence in implementing such a guideline. So with this, I will bring my presentation to close, and I'm happy to take any comments on what I've presented and address any questions. Thank you.